I just, I can't ask for a more gorgeous morning to get started. <laughs> so, as I discussed last time, if you reject Hume's conclusion, you have to reject at least one of the premises. And rejecting a premise, any proposition, commits you to its logical contradictory. All right, so let's look at the first premise. If the principle of induction can be proven, then either it can be proven using demonstrative reasoning or moral reasoning. And we looked at some examples of this. I mean, this is where the relations of ideas and matters of fact come in. All right? Now, moral reasoning doesn't mean reasoning using right and wrong, good and bad. Moral reasoning, he means something like habitual reasoning, how we're used to. And reasoning using matters of fact, yeah, right? we're really used to it. Uh, habitual reasoning also includes the principle of deduction. We use it a lot. Demonstrative reasoning uses uh, the relations of ideas. We looked at that before. So if the principle of deduction can be proven, then either it's proven through demonstrative reasoning or it's proven through moral reasoning. And these are the only two ways that we know anything according to Hume. Okay. Well, if we reject this premise, then we're saying this. We're saying the, the principle of induction can be proven, right? But it's false that the principle of induction can be proven either with demonstrative reasoning or uh, with moral reasoning. Huh. Well, you know, for Hume, this is, you know, Hume's like, yeah, what else are you going to use, right? These are the only two that we got. <laughs> well... How about we put a thumbtack in this one, right? We'll come back to this one later. Because <coughs> this is going to have some strange results. I mean, what this means is, if it's proven, it's not proven through you know, simply in virtue of the meanings of the terms, or you know, it's not proven through habitual reasoning, what we're used to, or everyday reasoning. Ooh, gosh. If it's not going to be one of these two, what's it going to be? Well, it's too gorgeous to wait around any longer. Let's go hit the trail. All right, so next premise. If the principle of induction can be proven using demonstrative reasoning, then there's a, a, a contradiction and the denial of the principle of induction. So remember, this is what's involved with demonstrative reasoning. It's true simply, it's, using, it's true in virtue of relations of ideas, meaning it's true simply in virtue of the meanings of the terms. If you, you know, all squares have four sides, it's true simply in virtue of the words all four squares and sides <laughs> and half, right? So uh, uh, if the principle of induction could be proven using demonstrative reasoning, then there's a contradiction and the denial of the principle of induction. Remember, the principle of induction says the future will resemble the past. All right. Well, uh, if this premise is false, then we are committed to its logical contradictory. Its logical contradictory is the principle of induction can be proven using demonstrative reasoning. And it's false that there's a denial. That, 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 excuse me. And it's false that there's a contradiction and the denial of the principle of induction. Well, <laughs> um, you, you have to <laughs> have a uh, contradiction and the denial of the principle of reduction in order for it to be proven using demonstrative reasoning. So at once this is saying uh, it can be proven using demonstrative reasoning, but it can't be proven using demonstrative reasoning. That's a logical contradiction. So this premise, right, uh, if we say this premise is false, we are committed to a logical contradiction, which is not good, right? We can't use logical contradictions in reasoning. Next premise. It is false that there is a contradiction in the denial and the principle of induction. So this is what Hume claims. And you take the principle of induction, which says the future will resemble the past, you say it's false, and you don't have a contradiction. Right. Okay, so if we're going to say, if we're going to deny this premise, we're saying that there is 
a contradiction in the denial of the principle of induction. Okay, well, hmm, what would that be, right? So what does, so there's a, con a, a, a contradiction, right? Uh, where I have to look at the meanings of the terms. All right, well, what does the future mean? What will happen? Uh, what does the past mean? Uh, what has already happened? Okay, so if we say that there's a contradiction in the denial of the principle of induction, we say, well, it is false that the future will resemble the past. All right. Now, you know, immediately that sentence sounds odd. I mean, we're really used to the principle of induction, right? Uh, so immediately we think, well, gosh, that, you know, there has to be something wrong there in saying it's false that the future will resemble the past. Okay, it might in fact be false, right? But then that's dealing with a matter of fact, not a relation of ideas. If it's a relation of ideas, right, we have to have a contradiction to say, you know, one part says the other part is false. You know, so when we say uh, it's false that all squares have four sides, we're saying that some four-sided figure does not have four sides, right? That's a direct contradiction. But we don't have that when we say it's false that the future will resemble the past. The future just means what's already happened, the past means what has happened. So this one's not gonna work. Okay, well, there's a climb. <laughs> Woo. Uh, all right, well, this looks like a good place to stop in. <laughs> Look at the next premise. Uh, if the principle of induction can be proven using moral reasoning, then the principle can be proven by observing that it has been effective in the, fa uh, in the past and inferring that it will be effective in the future. Okay. And this conditional reason why is, is this is just the definitional part of moral reasoning, right? We, this is how we habitually reason. It has happened in the past, so it will happen in the future. Okay, so if we deny this premise, we say the principle of deduction can be proven using more reasoning, but it's false that the principle can be proven by observing that it has been effective in the past and inferring it will be effective in the future. Well, uh, <laughs> this is a problem. Right? This is just a contradiction within itself. <clears throat> um, to, you know, to even reason using more reasoning, it just means you have to observe what's happened in the past and infer if will be, it will happen in the future. So if we deny this premise, what we're saying is the principle can be proven using moral reasoning, but it's false that it can be proven using moral reasoning. Well, that's a direct contradiction. All right. So this one isn't going to work. I mean, we can't use logical contradictions in reason. Okay, well... Speaking of contradictions. All right, next premise. If the principle can be proven by inferring that the principle has been effective in the past, uh, is that since the principle is effective in the past, it will be effective in the future, then the proof for the principle of induction uses the principle of induction. Right? And yeah, I mean, that's what's happening. <laughs> you're, you're saying, well, I've, I've inferred that it has been effective in the past. And uh, as I said, since it's been effective in the past, it will be effective in the future. Uh, that just, it, it, when the principle of induction says is the, pa the, the future will resemble the past. Yeah, I'm using the principle in order to prove the principle. Okay, so if we're going to deny this premise, right, what we're saying then is uh, the principle can be proven by observing that it has been effective in the past and inferring it will be effective in the future, and it is false that the principle, that the proof of the principle of induction uses the principle of induction. But it does, right? This is also a direct contradiction. Saying it has worked in the past, therefore it will work. That just is using the principle. Right. Okay. And by the way, <laughs> you're going to see a lot of people doing this. 
And they say, well, of course the proof works. It's a principle of induction works. It's been effective in the past, and so it will be effective in the future. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe you could do that. <laughs> but your proof for the principle uses the principle, right? Okay. Well, so we can't deny this premise because it results in a logical contradiction. All right. And logical contradictions can't be used in reason. It's not good news. <laughs> well, before I go down that rocky trail, <laughs> maybe this is a good place to stop and look at our next premise. So if the principle of induction could be proven by using the principle, then, uh, it could be, then the principle can be proven by assuming it's true. So the idea behind this premise is that you know, if you use the principle, well, it better be true beforehand. <laughs> uh, and if you're, you know, if it's true beforehand for the proof, well, then you're assuming it's true for the proof. Well, okay. So if the principle can be proven by using the principle, then, all right, then uh, the principle can be proven by assuming it's true. So if we deny this premise, we're saying the principle of induction can be proven by using the principle of induction, but it's false that the principle can be proven by assuming it's true. Okay, well, <laughs> this looks like another direct contradiction, right? Because in order for the principle to be used in the proof for the principle, we have to assume that it's true. But then if we say it's false, that it could be that we can, it can be proven by assuming it's true. Well, now we have a contradiction. Right? And contradictions can't be used in reason. So we can't deny this premise. It is gorgeous out here. Well, it's a good thing we reached the end of our hike. The sun's starting to come up. It's going to get pretty warm pretty fast. Well, it's the end of our hike, so it's time to look at the last premise. Okay. This premise says uh, it is false that you can prove the principle of induction by assuming it's true. Okay. And if we deny this premise, okay, we're saying, well, we can. <laughs> It, we can prove the principle by assuming it's true. So here's my proof for the principle of deduction. It's true. Right. Now, we don't have a logical contradiction here, but you know, it's just false, right? We don't prove anything. There is nothing that we prove by assuming it's true. So it, <laughs> If, we, you know, if there's nothing that we can prove by assuming it's true, well, then we can't prove the principle of induction by assuming it's true. So we, we haven't had a lot of good options so far looking at Hume's argument and trying to uh, reject a premise. Okay. But now remember what I said at the beginning, right? Let's put a thumbtack in rejecting that first premise. Do you remember? Right, so the first premise was, if the principle of induction can be proven, then either it is proven using demonstrative reasoning or it is proven using moral reasoning. Okay. And if we deny this premise, we say the principle of deduction can be true or it can be proven, but it's false that it's proven using demonstrative reasoning and it's false that it's proven using moral reasoning. Okay, well, well <laughs> what's left then? Well, remember, Hume is basically an empiricist. More or less, right? Let, let's let him slide on this whole relations of ideas stuff. But he's basically an empiricist. And what he's saying is you can't prove the principle of deduction using empiricism. Is there anybody all semester long that we, you know, might have, uh, you know, talked about, mentioned early on who could say, well, pff, you can't do it, but that doesn't mean that I can't. I can prove the principle of induction. Well, <laughs> uh, this one person, right, is going to, or at least, you know, several people anyway, I'm going to say, I can prove the principle of induction, and I don't have to use empiricism. 
Well, if you're not using empiricism, guess what you've fallen back to? You have gone back to rationalism. You're going to prove it in some rationalist way, right? You know, platonic form, uh, uh, you know, just the way the mind works. Something like that, right? I've got some knowledge, and I've got it none empirically. And amongst that knowledge is a principle of induction. All right. Now, you could take that approach. But now you've gone back to rationalism. And you've abandoned empiricism in order to do that. Thank you.